these days it's entirely possible that you could just whip up your own news site or start you know, promoting your own stories on you know, social media or starting a blog, things like that. But if you're not doing that and you're working for somebody else, then there's a, a really good chance that you're going to have to pitch your stories in order to have them included in that publication and have them published either online or, or in a traditional format like newspapers and things. So let's spend a little time talking about how to pitch stories and, and what you need to do in order to get your stories published. So let's start with what is a pitch? Well, first of all, pitch is just a brief explanation as to why an editor or publication or whoever's making that decision should be interested in your piece. Okay, so you're, you're making the case for, for why this is important and why it should be published and trying to get their attention so that they'll have, want your article in their publication or on their platform. So that's what a pitch is. That's what we're talking about. Uh, trying to convince somebody why they should publish your story. So some tips for pitching, just some general tips for pitching here. First of all, you need to pitch a story. Uh, and what we mean by that is pitch a story, not an idea of, you know, I think this would kind of be cool to, to write about or people might be interested in this. That's not flushed out enough. You need to have an actual story. And a story is also not an event. You can't just say, well, I'm going to this, uh, you know, this politician is speaking on Saturday here, so I, I'm going. Would you be interested in having me write something about that? The answer is probably going to be no. They want to know what the story is, not just your idea or event you're going to. You need to have something that's a little more flushed out than that, um, that, that tells them exactly what the, what the pitch is and exactly what you're going to be writing about. So pitch a story, not an idea, not an event, but a story. Have something to show already. You need to have done a little bit of reporting to say, here's some people that I have talked to, or here's you know some information, compelling information that people are going to be interested in. It doesn't have to be a full written story already, but you need to have done some research and say, this is what's happening, and show that you've done some of the legwork already. So have something ready to show to that person before you ever send anything in or before you ever start talking to them. Short and sweet is best. You know, just keep it short and sweet. This is not, again, not a full-fledged article, but you need to keep it short in your pitch, as short as humanly possible. So don't share a lot of extraneous information. Don't, I would include lists of interviewees, potential interviewees, and uh, you know, all these different files and different things like that. Keep it short and sweet. You're just trying to set the hook here and, and get them on that hook. And then after that, you can start to reveal and, and convey some of this information in a more polished form. But keep it short and sweet for the pitch. Consider the context. You know, who, what's the, how does this situation fit into the world at large? Whatever you're reporting on, whatever you're writing about, how does this fit into the world at large? How does it fit into to what their interests are going to be? I mean, related to that, we also need to consider the audience because, you know, the purpose of all this is not just to get information out, but you have to have people reading it or listening to it or, or however they're taking this in. So if it's not going to be of interest to that particular publication's audience, then they're not going to have any interest. Even if that person you're pitching to is really excited about this topic or this story, their their first thought is going to be, okay, what's our audience going to think about this? Are they going to be interested? Is this something they're going to want to read? Because, you know, that's how their mind works. So consider the context, how this fits into the world around you, how this uh, connects to the audience that you're trying to reach, uh, and also consider the outlet. Who are you pitching to? If you're pitching to, uh, you know, a technology blog or website or whatever and a news site um, that, and you're pitching to them some political story or some science story with no connection to technology then that's not going to be of interest to them right you have to know who you're pitching to again this kind of comes down to what the context is and who their audience is but but also what is this outlet trying to do what is their purpose here and and even considering things then like are they a short news, you know, are they are they a true news organization where it's going to be sh kind of shorter form? Or are they writing more feature articles and, and doing longer form things like feature articles and podcasts and things that, that tend to have people hanging around longer? And how does your story fit into that type of outlet uh, and that type of mindset? So you need to consider the outlet in general as well. Is this going to be something that fits into what they are trying to do? Make them say, hmm... Right? And by that, I mean, you know, get them curious about something. Is there something here that's different? Is there something here that's going to spark their curiosity and make them say, hmm, I hadn't thought about that, or that's that's something different or new, that's interesting to me, so it might be interesting to our audience. So think of a way in your pitch that you can kind of make them say, 
hmm, and, and throw something on them they might not have considered or, or might be curious about. Be specific, not hyperbolic, right? Don't just say, you know, this is the, you know, the biggest ever event or it's happening now or it's whatever. Say, you know, be specific. This happened yesterday or this is happening in two weeks from today or, or you know, this is how it's impacting our culture, not just, you know, the biggest thing ever. What makes it the biggest thing ever? How, why or how is it the biggest thing ever? What does that connect? Editors and, and people picking these stories are not going to be pulled in by hyperbolic, uh, you know, verbiage. Okay. They're just they're just not. They're too used to this. They've done their they had their years of experience probably in media criticism. They can see through all of that. So you need to be specific, okay, and not just use verbiage that uh, that you think sounds impressive and might sound impressive to the layperson. Okay. Everyone is different. So ask every editor, every every kind of gatekeeper in these situations is different in what they're looking for and how they want to be pitched and what information they want included. You know, some may want details of you know, give me a list of interviewees that you have potentially here or give me, a, you know, some different research files and stuff like that. A lot of them are going to be leave that stuff out, get to the core. This is a pitch, not the story. We'll get into all that if I did, if we decide to move forward here. But you don't know. And if this is your first time working with somebody and you don't know, then ask them, what specifically are you looking for here in a pitch? So uh, don't be afraid to ask or ask some other people, you know, that have had successful pitches. Ask some people around the office, you know, you've pitched to this person before. What are they looking for? What do I need to include here that I may not have thought of? So everyone is different and, and realize that everybody who you're pitching to is going to be different and going to be looking for different things. So know your audience in that way as well. And spelling and grammar count. Holy cow. If, if these people, you, you turn in a pitch that's full of, you know, spelling and grammar areas, and, and even if everything else is great, they're going to be wondering about your attention to detail. You know, are you really putting in the time and the detail and, and, and following up on these things and finding sources and really, you know, duplicating this, this source and information, making sure you have um, corroboration from other people? If you can't even spell things right, how are you doing all the other little things that are so important and so necessary for effective journalism? And respectable journalism right spelling and grammar count put the time into proofreading this this pitch have some other people proofread your pitch uh, people you can trust not to steal it but uh, have some other people proofread it right make sure that all the details are there down to the spelling and grammar okay. so really what we've been talking about so far is is pitching uh, for organizations that you're really a part of already and that you know uh, and that you're familiar with but but a lot of times journalists find themselves working as freelancers. And so pitching as a freelancer can be slightly different. And what we mean by this is that you are not specifically employed by one uh, publication or one organization to work for them and to find these stories. A freelancer is somebody who uh, can, can and does write for everybody, anybody who will pay for their article and their expertise, right? So you're selling, you're writing your, your article and pitching it to a, maybe a variety of different places. So there's some slight differences in terms of pitching as a freelancer. There's some crossover. There's some things you still need to do as a freelancer, but there are also some some uh, different considerations when you're just pitching to a variety of organizations. So, uh, first of all, again, though, pitch a story, not an idea. That's true in whether you're working you know, internally for an organization, for a large organization, or working as a freelancer. These people, these gatekeepers who are determining what goes in and what does not, they want to see a story in your pitch. They want to know what the story is, not what your idea is, not what event you're planning on going to. What specifically is there here that, that you're going to follow through with and, and provide them as a story? Pitching as a freelancer, you also kind of need to, look, to let them know why now and why you. Why now for the story? What is it about the story that's, that's compelling and, and will be compelling to their audience now? And why are you the person to tell that story? Why are you the person that's in a best place? Why are you in a good place to be able to get access and to be able to tell this story perhaps better than anybody else? So why now for this story? And why you for the person who should tell it? You need to consider the length and structure. I, can, I kind of talked about this, but depending on who you're working for, who you're pitching to, some of these publications have longer form uh, you know, kind of standards and others are shorter form standards. And they have different ideas about how things should be should be structured. So there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind about structuring the pitch as well. Uh, when you're structuring the pitch to them, you need to consider the length and structure of your pitch as well. So some things to consider about the length and structure of your pitch are, first of all, set up the story. 
you know, to, uh, you know, this is sort of a, you know, four paragraph pitch, so to speak. Your first paragraph should set up the story, should focus immediately on what is the story that you're pitching them. Get it out there right away. Don't save it and don't hide it and don't, you know, make it a big reveal to you. And get that story out there immediately so that they understand it. Then secondly, the second paragraph, give them the newsy hook. You know, what is it that really makes this story compelling and, and makes, uh, makes it so their audience is going to want to pay attention to the story and, and be invested in the story. Uh, third, your angle. How are you coming at the story? You know, what is it about this that, that you have a specific idea or a specific viewpoint on a specific perspective? And then who are you? Again, why you? Who are you? In this fourth paragraph, you can explain to them who you are and why you're in a position to tell this story more effectively than potentially anybody else. So, so think about the length and structure of your pitch, possibly in a fourth paragraph format, certainly no longer than that, I wouldn't think, but uh, maybe in a four paragraph. And, and some people would say, if you're really having trouble here, think of it in a headline version. Maybe first of all, if you're having trouble focusing the story and keeping it within these parameters and within whatever and you're having trouble thinking about how you would explain it, then come up with a headline first that you can share with this person and give them the headline just to, to again, narrow that focus and get it out there immediately. Think about the subject line for your email. Um, it shouldn't be, hey, I've got a story to pitch to you or whatever. It should be basically a headline. It should It should include, you know, story x about you know story about about y happening and fill in the it's like algebra you fill in the variables there but but the storyline has to, or the subject line in the email or whatever has to be something that lets them know immediately what this is about and why it would be of interest to in them in like five or six words basically so um, the subject line may take as long as the, the rest of the pitch to write because it really needs to be specific and really needs to be compelling in a, in a way that hooks them and then follow up. You need to follow up with these people. You need to set reminders. Of, not, now don't badger them. Don't start calling them every day or three times a day or whatever. But if you haven't heard from them in a week, you know, for example, you, you can write them back and say, hey, I just want to follow up. I sent you the story. Didn't know if you had a chance to look at it yet. I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. And then, you know, that kind of follow-up email. And then maybe one uh, a few days later, a week later, or something like that after that one. Um, but at some point, you got to take the hint and stop. You know, that doesn't mean don't be persistent, but if you haven't heard a word from these people, then there's a chance, there's a good chance that they're just not interested. And so you start to look at where else you can take this story, who, who might be interested in things. But, but don't hesitate to follow up. Again, there's a fine line between following up and badgering somebody. So try and walk that line carefully. But, um, but it's important that you follow up and that you be persistent in reaching out to, to folks when you're, when you're pitching them a story. If you have any questions about pitching or anything else related to digital journalism, feel free to email me. Always happy to respond to emails. Okay? So in the meantime, uh, get out there, find some stories, and start pitching to people and start getting some things published as best you can. Good luck.